Good morning, and welcome back to my vastly diminishing viewers. And if you are a viewer, thank you. The rest of you, where have you gone? <laughs> and in fact, it gives me the ideal opportunity to be slightly radical and possibly controversial. Because today I'm going to talk about pandemics. Whoa, YouTube, be afraid. So a bit of background. I spent a number of years of my life working on a project that looked at the species barrier. And that is where viruses and other diseases can cross from our animal friends into humans. But what does it mean? Well, it means there's lots of nasty stuff out there. Different creatures have different diseases from humans. And we share this wonderful planet with them. But we need to share it with respect. A new study, ooh, that's always a good term, has found that failure to stop pandemics at source has cost us billions. If only we protected the environment of these animals, we wouldn't catch their bugs. And preventing future pandemics at source would cost a small fraction of the damage already caused by viruses that jump from wildlife to people. Each year, on average, more than 3 million people die from these zoonotic diseases that spill over from wildlife into humans. Stopping the destruction of nature, which brings humans and wildlife into greater contact, would cost about 20 billion a year, which is just 10% of the annual economic damage caused by pandemics. This study heavily criticizes global bodies and governments that have focused only on preventing the spread of a new virus once it has infected humans, rather than tackling the root causes. Professor Aaron Bernstein says, that premise is one of the greatest pieces of folly of modern times. It details three key actions that we now must take. One, global surveillance of viruses in wildlife. Two, better control of hunting and trade in wildlife. And three, stopping destroying their habitat. And it's a win-win situation. These three actions would also pay huge dividends in fighting the climate emergency, and the biodiversity crisis. Wildlife is known to harbour vast numbers of viruses, and outbreaks are increasing in frequency and severity. The analysis of every zoonotic virus over the last century, known to have killed more than 10 people, include the Spanish flu, bird flu, Marburg virus, Lassa fever, Ebola, HIV, Nipah, West Nile virus, SARS, Zika, and now COVID-19. But why aren't we doing that? We know the little beasties have bugs, and we know we should show them the greatest respect to them and their environment. And by doing that, we would cut down on these viruses that jump into us. And here's my controversial statement. There's no money in it. Drug companies make a profit by treating you when you're ill. Not cutting down the trees in the rainforest doesn't make drug companies richer. Oh, I love YouTube. You can say pretty well what you want. YouTube's algorithm will place appropriate adverts around this video and share it with nobody. And because they're an American company, they value freedom of speech. 
But actually what I've just said isn't actually controversial. It's common sense. The truth is out there. Thank <laughs> you.